I made a few videos on warp drive recently because of all the papers being published, and this video is going to build on those. So if you want to see those, check out the description. In my last video, I asked the question, what should the Star Trek warp drive animation look like? Because throughout the Star Trek history of warp drives, their animations look cool, but they don't seem to be bending space, which according to all the papers seems to be our best viable option. After thinking about it a little bit, I have a new idea for what I think a ship dropping in and out of warp would look like, and I made some animations. Oh, hey, uh, real quick, before we do the intro, I just want you to know this video was like done. I was about to post it. And then I got in touch with Eric Lentz, who actually wrote the paper that I based my second warp drive video on. He was cool enough to watch my animations and tell me what I got right and what I got wrong. So if you want his expert opinion, stick around to the end. Okay, let's go on with the video. Let's get into it. So I just took a video from Star Trek and changed the warp animation to this. Let's watch that again, right? I've been watching this all day and I could, I could watch it more. I, I'm not sick of it. It's my own handiwork. It's like watching your child play. Uh, well, there it was. You saw it. I guess video over. Later. Now, I do want to go over what information went into the decision-making process to make it like that. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm here sitting at my uh, computer. I'm gonna show you uh, the animation. Uh, we'll go frame by frame and we'll talk about it. Huh? You might have noticed that in the very beginning, I kind of tease uh, my style by warping the background. Eric Lentz, PhD, physicist and strongman competition winner. A lot of people commented how he looks like the main character from Farscape, John Crichton, who also invented a warp drive. And yeah, I see it. Beauty and Brains, Eric Lentz, wrote this paper, got published in the journal Classical and Quantum Gravity, I think it's called. He also did a Q&A live on YouTube where he explained the whole paper, saying stuff like this. We're looking at two different components of what is called uh, the shift vector, a component of the geometry of uh, this particular soliton of space-time. And more cool stuff like this. A hyperbolic shift vector potential. Uh-huh. This mathematical object of the source function would have to have the sign that was the same as the integral along this past wave cone. Yeah, of course. Super over my head and... I loved every second of it. I like listening to people that say stuff that I don't understand. It's a weird, it's a fetish. Anyway, so the whole time he's talking about creating this uh, bubble where space-time is warped around the ship. We're not talking about really making the ship go really fast. We're talking about warping space around the ship in order to travel. I think that's the key difference between the animation that I built and what you see in most science fiction warp drive animations. It's the ship warping and stretching and doing all sorts of stuff in space. Nothing happens to space. But all the people that are talking about warp drive, they're not talking about moving the ship. They're talking about moving space and time. The original just looks like this. Nothing's happening to space. Just warping out into normal space. And when I turn mine on, warp space and, and then the bubble sort of takes it in and space kind of goes back to normal around it. You may have seen a movie, a little movie called Interstellar, and they actually did some interesting things. They were published in the same journal, Classic and Quantum Gravity. Our team's background span a range of disciplines. Fine art, graphics, engineering, computer science, photography, and theoretical physics. Same. What we shared was an opportunity and desire to create beautiful and physically accurate images of a black hole. A key part of this project was the development of the double negative gravitational renderer. This computer code creates images by modeling the path of light as it's warped by the immense gravity of a black hole. So this is where I got the inspiration for my animation. You can't see a black hole because uh, it sucks in all the light, but it also bends light. So the light that's like really far behind it, that's coming toward us from behind it, gets bent 
toward it. And it has this effect of like compressing the space around the, the event horizon. So as you can see here, the the space and the stars are warped in a similar fashion as the black hole from Christopher Nolan's uh, movie. Here's the Enterprise coming out of warp. So here the stars again are rotating around the event horizon of the warp bubble. Yeah, it's sort of like creating your own wormhole, I guess. Reminds me a little bit of the Star Trek uh, Deep Space Nine animation when they come out of the wormhole. Let me know in the comments if you like this animation, if you think I'm way off, and if so, are you a physicist or are you just trolling me? Okay, this is where I have to change gears and show you my conversation with Eric Lentz, because if I'm going to get heckled, it's going to be by a physicist. Hoping to get him on a podcast and have a much longer conversation with him, but this is the edited down Eric Lentz reaction and critique of my animation. Okay, I see the NC1701E. Perfect. Uh, okay, so what one of these mechanisms is going to look like to an observer from the outside is gonna very much depend on which of the mechanisms you use. The other paper that came out on the, you know, similar time to mine, the uh, uh, Gianni Marti or Alexi Bobrik paper, that would look similar to this. <clears throat> We're assuming that whatever it is that's creating it is transparent, so you can actually see through into the ship, whether or not the sure. plasma or whatever you, right. you make uh, is going to actually be see-through, remains to be seen, but let's assume it is for, for fun. If it is, and you have the ship in the center, the, the image of the ship that you would see from the outside will also be distorted as the effect you know, sort of mounts in its intensity. Ah, um, so this, the ship wouldn't just kind of sit there while the distortion appears. It would and then literally, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think so. It would start to move right away. I see, um, okay. Th that's just, th that is my interpretation. The science on that is not complete. Your speculation is canon to me. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, because all I'm trying to do is create like the closest possible, you know, effect. My, my critique for Star Trek is like, you know, the Star Trek Discovery ship that just kind of like, you know, twists around and oh, gosh. and then falls through space. Oh, I'm like, I'm you know, like, can't we what, do better why, than why that? Do one direction and not another. That <laughs> yeah, exactly. Discovery. The show's awesome. The show's amazing. I love it. Uh, but that warp animation, garbage. So I'm off to a good start here with the paper from my first video. But just when things were going great, he starts to tell me how wrong this is for his mathematical solution. If you're in, uh, instead not to use the uh, Bobrick martyr mechanism and use mine, then outside of the actual uh, collection of plasma or whatever is actually used to create it, uh, you would just see flat space time. So the starlight would be undistorted. In order to make the energy uh, condition work, I had to make it much more complicated. And so you have all of these uh, regions of high curvature that are going to interact with one another as, as light passes through. It'll maybe act like multiple lenses. And so you'll have you know the light being distorted one way, it hits one of the other ones, it's distorted another way, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe it bounces around a bit inside before it is able to come out. So is your yours is less like a bubble and correct me it, if I'm wrong, but like a prism sort it's of? It's a uh... bubble. Well, that is speculation on my part, that prism analogy mm -hmm. or collection of prisms. I do not precisely know yet. I've, I've not done those uh, geodesic calculations. And I haven't either. I'm sure I'll do that as soon as I get around to it. Get some free time, maybe on a weekend. So less of a bubble lens and more of a... Um... More of kind of a set of discs and rings surrounding the ship. Where the most intense distortions happen along those. There is distortion in between because obviously you need to envelop the whole ship in this uh, in this total bubble of uh, of shifted space time. You'd see essentially some some discs, like the back element would be a disc with almost a hole in the center to get really thin. So you'd have almost like a point like hole in the center. The front blunted end would be a disc. Uh, the um, 
Second from the back collection of material would be a ring. It'd have a larger hole in the center where the ship would rest in the center. Really intense distortions where that material is, as well as in between. But these discs and rings would surround the ship, and uh, and and maybe as you know, as you're panning across, as this you know this uh, effect is starting to take hold, you could see the individual. Uh, rings and whatnot starting to form. Would it start accelerating like as soon as the effect started becoming visible, do you think? that That's my intuition. Again, the creation mechanism mm -hmm. hasn't been nailed down yet. You heard it here first. Warp drive doesn't exist yet. Obviously, all this is just wild speculation, but what I'm trying to do is make those guesses based on the science so that we can just at least put our best foot forward in creating an animation that could possibly make sense. So we don't end up with this. If you were to try and create something, at least what I think I've described mm -hmm. uh, to you, I, I would, it would definitely cause me to sit forward in my seat and think about it for a minute. I'm like, oh, that's, is that right? And then and maybe I'd make a little sketch or something like that. And I'd probably come up to, well, there are probably some problems with it, but I don't want to do the math right now. <laughs> uh, you know, which, which is, you know, lay speak for, okay, that's good enough. Uh, right. you're, you're doing pretty well if, if you can uh, get that far. Man, I really appreciate you um, taking the time to, to talk to me about this. Yeah, well, I hope your video comes out, uh, comes out well. I look forward to, to seeing it. Awesome. Thanks again. Yep. Okay. Bye. Bye. So looks like I was pretty accurate when it comes to the Bobrick and Martire paper. That's the paper I did my first warp drive video on, but I've got some work to do if I'm going to make Eric Lentz's vision come to life. After listening to him, I have a real good insight and an idea of how to create that, but that's for another video. That's going to take some time. Okay. I already shot the ending to this video when I made it a week ago. So here's that. How cool would it be to design an effect that goes into a Star Trek show or movie? I would love that. Let's all tweet who is directing the next Star Trek. Jonathan Frakes. Let's all tweet at Jonathan Frakes and let him know that there's a new warp drive animation in town that he should just, he should give a, just take a gander at it. Just have a little gander. Jonathan Frakes. Have a gander. Number one, I named my car after you. Have a gander at the animation. Both those videos about warp fields and black holes are linked in the description. They're super interesting. Highly recommend you go check those out. If anybody's interested in me doing a tutorial on how I created these effects, just hit me up in the comments, tweet at me, whatever. Big thanks to the patrons whose support lets me sit around on a weekday making dumb Star Trek animations. You're making this channel happen. If you wanna support the channel, you can think about becoming a patron or signing up for this crypto.com debit card that gives you free Netflix and Spotify and 25 bucks just for signing up. I also have a coffee brand called BDE Coffee. That's big donation energy coffee because all proceeds go to the Unlimited Foundation, helping kids get prosthetics and become awesome cyborg superheroes. Turn your coffee habit into some superhero shit. Okay, I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, I thought I was going to warp.